Hello and welcome to the screencast about systems of linear equations. In this screencast we're going to learn what is a linear equation, what is a system of linear equations, what are the coefficients of a linear system, and what do we mean by a solution to a linear system, and finally how many solutions can a linear system have. This is an entirely a math screencast and there's not much MATLAB in this. The MATLAB will come into play a little bit later. So first of all, what is a linear equation? Well, we're pretty familiar with linear equations from our basic high school algebra courses like this one. This is an equation because we see the equal sign there and it involves a couple of variables. And if I trace this equation out and graphed it, it would give me a line. Um, in general, we say a linear equation is any equation that has this form. First of all, it's an equation, and we have a number on the right-hand side. And on the left-hand side, we have a bunch of other stuff here. We have some numbers, a1, a2, and so forth through an. We have several variables here, x1, x2, all through a up through xn, and all we're doing here is we're taking combinations of taking the coefficients times the variables and add it together. We're not doing anything more complicated such as multiplying variables together or squaring or taking square roots. We're just simply taking the coefficients times the variables and adding them together and setting them equal to another number, and that's a linear equation in n variables. So that's what a linear equation is singly. What is a system of linear equations? Well, suppose we had not only this single linear equation, but this one too, and I was interested in finding a pair of values for x and y that make both of these equations true at the same time. Now, that's what we call a linear system. It's two or more e linear equations together in concert that need to be true simultaneously. So, for example, the pair x equals 6, y equals 5 is an xy pair that works in the first equation because 6 times 3 minus 5 times 2 is equal to 8, but it doesn't work in the second equation because 6 plus 5 times 5 does not equal 14. So that would be, that would, uh, be considered a pair of uh, xy values that doesn't quote unquote work for us, but a pair that does work is x equals 4, y equals 2 because that makes both equations true at the same time because 3 times 4 minus 2 times 2 is equal to 8, and 4 plus 5 times 2 is equal to 14. So we would say then that x equals 4, y equals 2 is a solution to the system. Again, a solution to a system is a list of values for the variables that makes all the equations in the system true at the same time. So how many solutions can a system have? We saw that the system earlier had one solution. Could it have more than one? Does it have to have any at all? Well, it's helpful to think about these linear equations in graphical or geometric terms. Now here's a picture where I've taken the two equations from the system we saw in the last slide and actually graphed them, and you see them graphed here, and they have one common intersection point there at 4, 2, x equals 4, y equals 2, and that happened to be the solution. Now this is only for two equations and two variables, but we can generalize this to say uh, for in generality that the number of solutions to a linear system corresponds exactly to the number of possible intersection points of the things that are graphed out by those equations. Now how many ways could a couple of lines, for example, intersect? Well they may not intersect at all, so they could have no solutions, that would be two parallel lines. They might intersect exactly once, like we see here, so exactly one point, but they can't intersect only twice, because then that would cause one of the lines to bend around, and lines don't do that. So the only other option is that those lines might coincide with each other, which means we'd have infinitely many. So a linear system can have either zero solutions, exactly one solutions, or infinitely many solutions, but no other options are available. Some examples of these other two kinds here. This first one is a, is a system that has no solutions at all. We say the system is inconsistent if it has no solutions. And you can see why, perhaps, because the left-hand sides of the two equations are exactly the same, but the right-hand sides are different. So there's no way that x plus 5y can be equal to two things at the same time. The second equation is one that has infinitely, the second system, I should say, has infinitely many solutions, and you can probably see why with a little bit of work. The second equation is really just two times the first one. So really these are two, quote unquote, two lines that are really the same line, just written differently. So there are infinitely many x, y pairs that satisfy both of those equations. Now let's take a look very briefly at a larger linear system, say this one. This one has two equations and three unknowns, and we're going to start labeling our unknowns as x1, x2, x3, and so forth, rather than x, y, z, because linear systems in real life applications typically have hundreds and hundreds of variables, and we run out of letters pretty quickly. So a linear system with two equations and three unknowns, we might want to think about are there any solutions at all to this. We'd be looking for a list of x1, x2, and x3 values, 
that satisfies both equations simultaneously. Well, are there any such solutions? Well, it turns out that there is at least one solution, uh, 6, negative 4, 0. You can plug those in and check that they satisfy both the first equation and the second equation. If you plug them back in, you get two E two uh, uh, equal things. Uh, but there's also another solution too, 5, 0, and 5. And so since there are two of them, it must mean that there are infinitely many of them. Now it's a very good question to think about how do I find these solutions in the first place, and that's in a later screencast where we're going to discuss that. Geometrically, uh, we can think about what these equations look like if graphed. Now these are three variables, and so it would take three dimensions to graph them all. And instead of a line in three-dimensional space, they trace out two planes. Uh, the red plane is the first equation's graph, and the green plane is the second equation's graph. And as you can see, they have uh, more than one common intersection point. Those two planes intersect in an entire line, and every point on that line that you see there of intersection represents a solution. So there are infinitely many solutions, and we can actually see that graphically. Now, graphical uh, interpretations help, but they have a limitation, obviously. If we get up to four variables or more, we run out of dimensions that we are able to perceive things in. So we need some better algebraic ways of finding solutions to linear systems that will put up with larger and larger dimensions that we can't actually see. So let's recap what we learned in this little screencast here about linear systems. We've learned that linear equations are combinations of numbers that we call coefficients times variables that are added and set equal to another number. A system of linear equations is a collection of linear equations that are, must be all true at the same time. A solution to a system is a list of values for your variables that make all the equations in the system true simultaneously. And we've learned that systems can have either zero, one, or infinitely many solutions, um, but no others, not two or only three or only four. And we don't know how to find those solutions yet, but we're getting to that in a little bit later. Thanks for watching.